welcome. Well, this is MindShift and I'm your host, Avneet Kohli. Like every single episode, bringing to you the best minds across science, spirituality and business to help you invest in self-mastery. So I'm absolutely eager to know what you guys have been up to the last two weeks. What have you been reading? What's happening with COVID? Every single thing that's been up with you. During this episode, I have a very, very special guest who is going to be talking to you about youth and social change. To tell you a little bit about him, while most 18-year-olds are busy coming up with schemes to make money, my special guest today is dedicated to getting India its rightful place on the international stage. In 2011, he founded the India's International Movement to Unite Nations, which is fondly called the IIMUN, with the sole aim of uniting the world the Indian way. Over the past decade, IIMUN has grown into becoming the world's largest offline social platform backed by 26,000 young volunteers who annually impact nearly 10 million students across 160 cities in 22 countries. Well, that's a lot of impact. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready as I introduce you to my special guest today. Model UN, a world parliament where students discuss about world issues and try to come up with peaceful solutions to them. Namaste. I send warm greetings to all those taking part in the 2015 Indian International Model United Nations Conference. And now on the election that isn't, it's time for our debut segment called Apna Time Aiga, where we use the help of our friends from IIMUN. Join me in welcoming the founder and president of India's international movement to Unite Nations, whom the Economic Times refers to as a future prime minister in the making. Give a round of applause wherever you're sitting to Rishabh Shah. What's up, Rishabh? <laughs> What's up? So good to see you. Uh... <laughs> Out of all the quotes that 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 pos the, uh, out of all the quotes that that exist, I think the one with the economics times is the most misplaced. But I'm 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 glad uh, I'm glad to be on the show and thank you for having me. Well, and I know you're a very very humble gentleman, but I've actually got my team to dig into every single article that exists on you. I know that you maintain quite a low profile, but we've managed to source our facts. So they come from authentic sources, and it is credit well deserved. So kudos to you. Well, no, thank you. That's like I said, very, very kind of you. And um, it's it's a lot of people who who work behind the scenes, and then you just you you're there because you're the face of it. So honestly, it's it's the effort of a lot of young people, uh, whatever little um, I'm on is. I know it's been almost a decade, or I think eleven years that you've been doing this. How did you begin, Rishab, and what was the motivation to get started? So yes, it's almost been a decade. It's been about nine, nine and a half years, um, and it's been um, it's been very exciting. It's been it's been a journey to to uh, in in a small way. It's it's been very fulfilling. Uh, what motivated me to start it is is uh, ideally the idea that that as as a country and as countries across the world we've been very dominated by uh, or very mesmerized by the idea of the west we, somehow people in india look at the west for answers forgetting that that most of the answers lie in studying our past and like uh, somebody who i really revere and respect dr shashi tarur said that he said that if you don't understand where you've come from you won't understand where you're going so the idea is that through through understanding india we want to be able to unite the world and that is what the organization essentially does that we try to wire the wire the organization 
unite uh, the world in terms of the younger age bracket by sensitizing them to to what india stands for so this happens through conferences and dialogues and seminars and so on and so forth it's amazing that you guys at least uh, have familiarized the youth that there is a career option or there's something that you have a voice but i'm just wondering what do you think can still be done today because i believe the model un conference a lot of them learn their public speaking skills they learn how to put forward their point but they don't land up in office where you know we really need the youth to be playing an active role in office and take the reins in their hand how do you think that transition can happen so you're saying in office in terms of public office i'm guessing yeah. um, in terms of government yes yes yeah, so, so uh, that that's been one of the that's been one of the major concerns also back back home in in india is that how do we translate that into essentially people who go on and become decision makers per se so um and and the idea is that it's a growing movement unlike unlike the west and unlike different places where where kids grew up with a strong sense of nationalism which is instilled in them i think india in the recent past has grown uh, to understand that 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 sense that sensation of national pride is now coming to fore and therefore when you add anything any activity to it um like say for example this this red edition of the un of model un which we now call movement to unite nations um any such activity will only propel them forward so it's happening slowly gradually young people are entering politics the young parliamentarians ministers who are who who once were part of the organization were now actually in public office who doing incredibly well and uh, you can't call a politician in his 50s i'm sorry you can't call a politician a youth politician um and and you you can't call a person who is 41 or 42 um as as a person who's asking too much when it comes to uh, you know when he's young and he's he's going above and beyond i i refer to the case of a popular politician in india who who rebelled against his party and said i want to be the chief minister of my state but uh, but but was told saying you're asking for too much too young at 42 uh, if you're asking for too much too young to be a chief minister when will he go on to be if at all when will he become a prime minister and look at president obama he made he became president when he was when he was uh, um young he wasn't a president in in his 60s and 70s and you need a young leader in order to lead a young country because if you don't have a young leader to lead a young country uh, we are in the opposite direction rishav i'm also wondering you know with with all the work that you do which certainly is about social change it is about integrating the youth to you know acquaint them with what's going on in the country what do you think i mean how can we motivate the current generation or in fact even the education system to come up with a curriculum that actually teaches the youth how to go about this path what kind of a shift in curriculum do you think is required to have more and more leaders come into the world so so i think uh, it's a very important question because i think the future of our country is shaped in our classrooms that's what sarvapalli radhakrishnan said and um, and being the the first vice president and second president of 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 the nation he he obviously knew what he was saying if we do not take care of of the education system we're not going to get anywhere so uh, i think the change will only be brought about if we change dramatically the the curriculum and instead of 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 coloring the curriculum which which is either saffronizing or otherwise uh, the the idea should be of how to propel these people into into the political system or just into the system in terms of bureaucracy and so on and so forth and to that end um, i i find it very surprising that that uh, the new education policy in india and so also a lot um, leaves a um, lot of policies in the in the past uh, leave a lot to be desired uh much credit of course to the government to come up with a new education policy because for the last 30 years for some for some god for second reason we could not even come up with an education policy but uh, but there is there is there's so much that left that 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 needs to be done like say for example one one of the small recommendations why your show which 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 we've been uh, mentioning to multiple governments is why not have a fast track system for young people at 16 to 19 um or 16 to 25 to go in and men- and work with with uh government officials at different levels and not work in terms of ek cup chai lekana which is what normally happens but uh work with where 
you frame policies or you understand what's happening on the grassroots level and as much as 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 much as members of parliament do this in an individual capacity i think it's about time that we as government pass we as as and i say this as government not just in maharashtra but in in india and different parts they passed this as a law saying every mla mp elected representative has to have a must of having at least five interns every every three months or every six months yeah, you need cool. to in terms on a re- rotating basis because imagine the kind of exposure that that a 19 year old will get if he's going to sit inside parliament while parliament is going on of course the sad part about indian parliament is that people are more interested in playing cards and pubg and less in terms of making policy but uh, the, the the thing is that it has to uh, it it uh, it has to change and it will change only when a young person actually clicks a picture and tweets it and says look uh my member of parliament or look this member of parliament was sleeping in in uh, in parliament and how is that acceptable because today lok sabha tv if you tell young people to go and watch lok sabha tv they will switch off the tv and they look at you and wonder what's wrong with you what's wrong with you <laughs> so uh, so so the thing is that this kind of a program is so simple to implement but uh, my question to 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 a lot of people who probably will watch this because i have said too many things i shouldn't be saying but uh but the idea is that if they actually watch this is that why don't you why don't you have five interns who are, who don't have any connection to any political system and no lineage necessarily as a prerequisite to join your system which you may have one out of four who is from a political family and i have nothing against it but the remaining four as normal interns who come in and who are under studies to you and don't don't give them chai and coffee to make because bloody hell young people don't want to make chai and coffee when they are studying uh, under you they'll make that cup of coffee out of reverence and out of respect but but the idea essentially is that where they where they understand yeah, how to yeah, yeah. And to everyone who's watching now is the time you put in your questions because we're nearing the end but rishab i think the underlying theme of everything we've been talking about is if you have a vision you right. have dreams in your eyes whether yeah. it is capital whether it is not being taken seriously whether it is facing whatever obstacles you have to if right. you are hungry and you have the drive to make something come true you will so for all you guys who've been making excuses who've been thinking that oh my god but my dad is not this person but i don't have this much money but i don't know how to speak in english but i'm in a small city drop all those limiting beliefs and just get started rishab my last question to you what is the single mind shift you would like every viewer to have in 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 my opinion i think uh, shows such as before before i answer that shows uh, such as mind shifts actually bring about that mind shift like you were saying you know that little little thing that you said that that don't think about um don't think about what you're born with but think about the legacy that you're going to leave um in the planet and um to to that end um the mind shift that i would love every viewer to have is that you know remember that every adversity brings about opportunity and um if you are able to convert an adversity to into an opportunity then quite honestly um then then i don't think there is ever going to be an obstacle so whenever somebody asks me saying has there been an obstacle in your life i'd rather say that that's been an opportunity oh well, guys thank you so much this has been a phenomenal episode until next time this is avneet kohli taking your leave shabakhair